Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan on News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Welcome to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. And I'm Alan Gilbreth with GeekySideTV.com. And this episode of Tool Talk Radio is brought to you by Flamethrowers R Us Landscaping. Scientists yes. have observed that when an erupting volcano completely eviscerates the plant life below, that foliage eventually grows back more lush than ever. This is the animating principle of our landscaping company. <laughs> at Flamethrowers R Us Landscaping, we guarantee that at some point after we are long gone, your yard is going to look fabulous. Flamethrowers R Us Landscaping. Just imagine what we can do to your property. <laughs> <laughs> out of the box thinking alan that is what we always I gotta tell here. you though they did the best job in the world on my private hedges absolutely yeah they're gone they're gone <laughs> low maintenance it's all done but uh welcome to a tool talk radio everybody alan if there's a word of the day it's going to be unconventional mm. uh, we have some unconventional mm. guests coming in later in the show we got uh we got one of our new sponsors uh rick bowman from weikert realtors and he tells us he's bringing in a surprise celebrity guest uh, oh, in the second hour okay, of the show okay uh we're, we're not going to tease anymore because we don't want to give the whole thing away uh uh coming up shortly we got our buddy jay hill from big m roofing oh, and yeah. remodeling and uh He's an unconventional guy. <laughs> that is to no say offense, the least. <laughs> <laughs> but also, Alan, um, in addition to that, you and I, I don't think these are unconventional. These are, look, we're looking into the future. Here on Tool mm. Talk uh, Radio, we don't just uh, deal with the here and now. We deal with what is the future of home improvement. Ooh, yeah. We've got something, I, I would call this, Alan, the next million dollar idea slash the future of home improvement because this idea is coming. There's an idea I have that's going to make wall paint obsolete. What do you think of that? Mm, okay. No I'm further curious. teases. I'm uh, curious. Okay. I'm curious about this, Alan. You said uh, the the tale of little Timmy continues oh, in our career oh, wars. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all. It, there's. There's. I don't want to over tease because we have some other stuff. We have uh, outside of the toolbox, which is a new segment mm. we're going to try to introduce later in the show. And of course, we'd love to take your phone calls at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline. How do you oh, like that, Alan? You can get. Right. Call or text us at 901-683-0989, and we'll see how unconventional you are. So it's all coming at you today on Tool Talk Radio. But before we get to any of that, there we go. <laughs> all right. Before we get to any of that, there we go. We needed our theme music, Alan. <laughs> Some combinations were destined to go together. Chocolate and peanut butter, Abbott and Costello, mm -hmm. or the reading of a vampire novel written by Alan Gilbreth and a visit to a nerve specialist. <laughs> 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 and of course, there are other combinations which should never be brought together. A skunk and a petting zoo, orange mm -hmm. juice and toothpaste, or a cross-country road trip and your mother-in-law. <laughs> oh. oh. No comment, uh, Alan. Oh. No matter what your tastes, however, one combination we can all agree is terrible is the combination of disease-ridden sewer fumes and the inside of your home. Mm. And yet, for most of history, humanity struggled greatly to keep their living quarters free from sewage and their unpleasant fumes. In the year 1775, however, an erstwhile watchmaker named Alexander Cummings invented a device so revolutionary that it would become the centerpiece of sanitary engineering technology for centuries to come. Like most great ideas, the solution was remarkably simple yet effective, and today virtually every sink, bathtub, and toilet contains a variation of this invention. My friends, we give you the S-Bend. Yay! You gotta say that carefully, but uh, yep, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> the S-Bend, Alan, what yep, a yep. simple but effective. I, I was thinking about it today as I was washing my hands, Alan. Just uh, simple, it keeps the fumes out. Tell us what the S-Bend does for those well, who, who don't know. Well, you know, it's one of these amazing, you know, it's one of those kind of amazing inventions that somebody suddenly, you know this guy bolted straight upright at two o'clock in the morning and went, Put water between the air. Right. So you nothing's put a little, getting through you that. You put a little S bend and you can put a couple of tablespoons of water in there. And now the air coming up and the air going down never meet. Absolutely. So you don't have a basically a flu coming up out of the sewer into your home. Yeah. Yeah. You look under your, if, folks, if, you, if you're not sure uh, what we're talking about, look under your sink. 
And you're going to go, why does the drain pipe do this curve? Well, because there's a level of water in there. If why, What's that curvy thing on the bottom of our toilet? Well, that level of water keeps all the sewage from coming up and uh, making it unpleasant there. And, and what? A, and it's it's foolproof. I and mean, occasionally save somebody's wedding ring when they forget it and <laughs> let it go down the sink. Well, uh, that's true. you got a fighting chance if something goes down the drain. It doesn't just go straight into the sewer. It may land in that S-curve if you didn't put too much water down it. Yeah, it's just such a great, you know, and I, I'm, we're all about, uh, you know, that saying simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Yes. And it's just, um, it is such a brilliant, uh, it's such a brilliant invention. And yet it's, it's timeless. I mean, it's been, what, what are we talking? The 1700s and it's still, it's still around today. You know, when the idea was that good and you, it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, just, I'm, I'm looking at some of the notes here about what he was dealing with. You know, he, he was in, uh, he was in London, and uh, you know they talked about a lot of the sewage went out into that Thames River. Is it Thames? The Thames. The Thames. The Thames. Imagine that back in the day. You know, was, but, uh, unpleasant doesn't begin to describe it. Yeah, sometime later I'll tell you the story why they're called brownstones. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And for all of you people enjoying a nice uh, breakfast right now, we're we're happy to give you a little sewage talk <laughs> to uh, to help you along. But yeah, absolutely one of the uh, one of the great inventions of our time, the S bend and uh, uh, Alexander Cummings. So. Uh, we sure appreciate him. But uh, we hope you appreciate what you're listening to on Tool Talk Radio uh, from the uh, News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. I wonder if they're fraternal or identical tools. <laughs> News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. And welcome back to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from Geeky Side TV. Uh, you can give us a call or text on the Big M Roofing Re and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. Uh, yeah, the man himself is going to be here shortly. Right. Jay Hill. Big M. I'm going to have to get used to that. And I'm still a little resentful about that little stinger that comes in before us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did we ever do to that guy? He's <laughs> We did. We've done plenty. <laughs> anyway, hey Alan, uh, if you're just tuning in, folks, one of the th we said the word of the day is unconventional. That's mm. I, if there's a theme for today's show uh, between our guests, between you and I, mm. between the whole you know everything going on here. I think that's the word of the day. So um, we, we 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 in our exhaustive show prep, Alan, we were talking about a, a, a new segment that we think uh, we want to bring to the show. Mm, okay, we're going to call this outside the toolbox. Or is it outside of the toolbox? Like, it's, you know, whatever. Unconventional solutions to home improvement conundrums. How's that? Oh, so uh, you're talking about my toolbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan, I mean, I, I I would think anybody that's worked with their hands or mm -hmm. worked with tools long enough, okay, there's those, there's those great tools we appreciate. There's all the cool power tools. But then there's the, uh, the street-level tools solutions here that one off type right. thing right right and well, so let's let's talk about that we I both got a little you, checklist here. okay yeah. well i introduced you to my favorite of non-hardware store addition to the toolbox a while back mm -hmm. you looked at me like i was crazy yeah, well standard uh standard reaction well it to is you, standard yeah. reaction for most people but <laughs> yeah. you know the the first time you looked at me and you went you know you looked at me and you said alan what's your favorite tool in the toolbox and i went you know, A, it was a little bitty tiny flathead screwdriver or a pair of chopsticks. Yeah, and I said chopstick. And I and I and what go. I was thinking about when you said chopsticks, Alan, I was like, huh, I, I like to think I'm up on the latest tool lingo, but you were literally talking about a pair of chopsticks. 5,000-year-old pieces of bamboo that you, you know, eat your, uh, eat your, uh, um, Dim some with yes, well, and then you and then you brought me a pair of chopsticks, and I got to admit, I think I used them literally the next day. <laughs> like, hey, you know what would be good for this little thing here is chopsticks. But what do you? Why would you use chopsticks, Alan, as a uh, as a craftsman and a workman? What what sort of well? You know? I, you, have you ever dropped something down into that tight little spot <laughs> and you just can't? And in my case, get your gargantuan size hands yeah. down through that little spot. 
Well, you know, a good pair of chopsticks gives you that little bit of extra reach, and you can get down in the just the darndest places right. and get hold of it and fish it back out. And that's screws, bolts, uh, anything that you happen to drop down in that little spot. You know what I like about that, Alan? Chopsticks don't conduct electricity. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're when you're going into that because some some little bolt fell in, mm. in behind inside that light switch. Yeah. And you're like, hmm, how do I get this out? <laughs> don't grab the needle nose pliers, no, folks. No, grab the chopsticks. No. Yeah, get those. Uh, the other thing is it doesn't conduct heat. Oh, they just light on fire, I guess. Well, but, but yeah. you know that usually that little tiny piece of engine part or whatever that's nine hundred degrees, right, uh, isn't going to burn through your chopsticks in the time it takes to grab that little screw and get it out of there without singeing all the hair off the back of your hand. And and what does a pair of chopsticks cost? That's the beauty, right? Well, like, I mean, twenty cents or something. Well, so. well you get a brick of them yeah. for like four bucks. So there you go. You got one hundred and forty four chopsticks and. You know, you, you're good for decades. You know what else they're good for, Alan? I discovered this as long as as long as we're trading uh, war stories. I stir stir paint with them. You can mess with critters. You got all kinds of stuff. Funny you mentioned paint, Alan. Oh, okay. Imagine this, folks. Okay, so you're outside at a man. Okay, imagine you've got to paint a bunch of shutters or something like Ooh, that. Ooh, okay. You get yourself a brick of chopsticks. You put them into the ground like little spikes. Imagine like mm -hmm, uh, what mm -hmm. is that acupuncture? Or what are those? The a yeah, bed of nails yeah, type thing. <laughs> You lay it on there, and, and it'll self-level. You yes. just gently push it down. Now it is elevated. It's off the grass. You can paint one side, let it dry out, flip it over, paint yep. the other, and and then you just got a few little holes to uh, touch up when you do it. You know, Well, do the do the back side first, then do the front side, right. and you're pretty much good to go. You're pretty good go, and, and you've aerated your lawn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How about this, Alan? And, and I got to admit, this is one – that I stole from you. I, I, you know, trust me, people, I don't like giving Alan credit for things. It, it builds him up and makes it, it gives him an inflated <laughs> ego. But I got to give you this one. I had a customer that was having all sorts of issues with squirrels mm. chewing on the siding of their of her house. Right. So and she had this fence that was positioned in a way where the squirrel could literally just sit on the fence and chomp away. Right. It didn't even have to reach up. It didn't even have to put an effort. And uh, we tried. you know, I repaired it several times and eventually you came up with the solution, which is to mix a bunch of cayenne pepper yes. in with the paint. Yep. It's it's a little gritty, but it's... No, actually, you don't even notice the texture. But so we... Uh, and this was a good three years ago I did this. So you, you folks, if you've got issues with uh, vulnerable <laughs> spots of your home where you've got critters, hopefully you don't have raccoons, but you might, you know, some kind of uh, creature trying to eat your house. They don't like cayenne pepper. <laughs> Not really. No, no. <laughs> It, uh, uh, yeah. It's a great cure for the uh, neighborhood dog that likes to uh, visit your yard. Now, um, do you, you where just, do you put that, like on the bottom of the fence? Or? You just sprinkle it, you know, in that area that the dog seems to be using. And because when they sniff first, they won't like it. It doesn't yeah. hurt them, but they'll go away. Right. Uh, I've also mixed it with olive oil and painted it on fence rails yeah. to keep the dog from pulling on the fence. Right. Dog gets excited, he's barking, and he grabs the fence. This was for the larger breeds. Yeah. And, you know, this is very unpleasant. Of the only I only have one caveat to that, because okay. apparently a friend of mine has a Cajun dog. <laughs> and thought so it, there's a, a fido is digging this cayenne pepper so it, so <laughs> we, we we found the deer pooch out there lovingly licking on the fence wasn't tearing it up or pulling on it anymore right apparently it did cure the behavior but the dog's out there like i, I like this flavor you know yeah so. <laughs> absolutely so uh <laughs> i got another one alan this is and and i know you 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 mentioned one i don't want to i don't want to steal your thunder on this but uh my uh, bath, our bathroom sink downstairs for some reason is always clogging. Like right. probably every six months I got to, well, the, the, this is one thing that I cannot be blamed for because there's hair in the sink. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't have that problem, Alan. Okay. You and I are both follically challenged. We, so. we are. But, um, I'm, I'm a big fan. You take your needle nose pliers, you grab an old, uh, wire coat hanger, bend a tiny little hook on the end and then uh you take the uh the drain stopper out folks which is very easy you just look under your it's right, right near the s bend like we said mm -hmm. or it's, it's near the u bend i guess and uh you un you unscrew that and that little coat hanger grabs everything yes one caveat though 
they can go through metal pipes. Yeah, don't I learned that through the early in my homeowner's yeah. <laughs> career. <laughs> well, the reason too, Alan, is a lot of uh, if if you have a pipe that is maybe ten years old, it's starting to to, to corrode, and you give that one good poke, and yep. that could that could go Going through. So right be right on through. Be gentle, <laughs> be judicious. But uh, I'm telling you, it works better than some of those nifty uh, things. They, it's it's it, it works for me. I, that's my go to. Okay. So. Uh, one more. You you had one more. Good one, one more. All right. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine called me this week and said a friend of hers had left her lawnmower out in the weather all winter long. Mm-hmm. So lawnmower's dead. Okay. All right. So I get over there. The lawnmower is the cheapy version from a big box store that I'm actually very familiar with. And I'm like, aha. All right. Let's stick a new spark plug in it. Let's clean out a few things. Yeah. And wouldn't start. Still wouldn't start. Still wouldn't start. So ultimately, we're out there taking the uh, little connection off that runs the fuel, taking the fuel line off, and cleaning it out with a bread tie. Yeah. You know, run that little bread tie up through there, make sure all the little... You're talking about that little thing with the wire and the yeah. little thing of plastic. Yeah, yeah. It came off the it came off the bread, you know, came off the bread, you know, run that <laughs> through there real good. Got that little piece of dead piece of grass or leaf or whatever it was out of it. Got to put thing put back together. Primed it up, started it, let it run. Awesome. And, and throw it out when you're done. I love that stuff, man. <laughs> there's And there are bigger, more dangerous applications, too. I mean, there's things that uh, don't get me started on what you can do with an old pillow. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> you know, when you're leveling a door or something like that. Mm-hmm. There's uh, any number. Uh, we'd love to hear your your hacks, I guess you could say, or your unconventional uh, solution. So outside of the toolbox. So I think this is going to be an ongoing uh, segment. Oh, easily. Alan. So, but uh, we we'd love to hear from you. So if you do want to uh, give us your unconventional ideas, get in touch with us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio here on News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, Alan, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking roofing with our buddy Jay Hill. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. I wonder if they're fraternal or identical tools. <laughs> News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. And welcome back to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. <laughs> I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilberth from Geeky Side TV. And the man himself, Jay Hill, from Big M Roofing and Remodeling. So, people, if you've got uh, roofing questions or, you know, uh, well, anyway, we're going we're gonna to introduce Jay in a minute. But if you've got any uh, questions involving roofing, uh, make sure you call us on the Big M Roofing and Remodeling hotline at 901-683-0989. Uh, or you can send text those messages as well. So, either way, uh, you can get the answers you need. But, hey, Jay, man, welcome to the new digs, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. That's really nice. Yeah, and thanks for uh, thanks for providing us with the uh, Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline. So glad to do it. <laughs> glad to do it. <laughs> well, for those of you who are kind of new to uh, new to the show, Jay's an old friend of ours. You you run Big M Roofing and Remodeling. Which, w- real quick, where did you get the word uh, Big M? What's uh, I think I great, can guess, but yeah. <clears throat> great question. Actually, uh, it comes back from the CB days, way back in the day when my dad was. C being in the 1970s with every other man in the country, I think. And uh, <laughs> I remember that. I just yeah. remember sitting in the back seat as we were traveling, and Dad would be on the radio, and you'd hear the trucker saying, I'm pulling into the Big M. Big M means Memphis, and Big M Roofing uh, is Memphis. There you go, man. Yeah. Great. It's right to the point. So it fits in perfect with the uh, motif we got going on here. But, Jay, you, uh, Alan and I met you at uh, one of the home shows at the Agri Center, and we were we were struck immediately when we went to your booth because you you specialize in a kind of uh I guess you could say situation that a lot of homeowners find themselves in. You you obviously do roofing and remodeling, but you are sort of an expert when it comes to uh working with homeowners insurance uh policies because a lot of people they they it, they can find replacing their roof kind of daunting or they can, you know, and and they may not realize that they actually qualify for a replacement with their homeowner's insurance. And we had a lot of questions. You really helped us out. And uh, uh, so we thought it, it'd be great to get you on the show talking about that. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think you're, you're, you're dead on there. Uh, you know, the insurance world, uh, if you will, has gotten extremely complicated as it uh, relates to uh, your home. 
and uh, navigating that is really what we do best. Uh, um, like to work with the homeowner directly with the insurance company as well, and just make sure that they're getting everything that they can get to maximize their claim to make sure that everything they're trying to accomplish, any damage that is there is actually taken care of. And that's not something that you do every day as a homeowner, of course. No. <laughs> I do it, do it, you know, eight, ten times a week. So you, you get used to it and, and, and knowing the laws. And, and I tell you, I'm glad you brought this up because in as much as 80% of our business uh, in roofing is in, insurance work, uh, that end of the business is changing drastically by the minute. Insurance companies are tightening up like there's nobody's business, uh, and all of them, not just just some of them. And 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 if you don't know how to work through that, and don't know like the laws uh, in Tennessee, you know we've got a lot of case law for right to match and line of sight and things like that. There are so many ways that we can be successful with your claim that you just wouldn't know about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And we should say too, Jay, you've got experience in both departments. You you worked in insurance and you're a contractor for many years. So That's I mean, right. not That's everybody right. has that kind of background, Alan. So I mean, it's uh it's definitely helpful. So well, uh, you know. Well, I'm going to look at him and go, "All right, I'm I'm going to start we're we're going to start the uh, the firefight with the my favorite question in the world. Every time we sit down with somebody is, "What do you wish people knew before they called you?" I think that's a great question, Alan, because at the end of the day, I think what I really want folks to know is that the most important thing is, is that you do contact somebody. I I make the analogy all the time about, you know, that, that using someone like myself to help them with their claim is, is about the same as going down to court with or without a lawyer. You know, if you don't, if you don't have representation in that situation, you're Mm -hmm. pretty much just going to get what, what the judge or the jury gives you. So knowing what your rights are, Knowing what your coverages actually are uh, is uh, is incredibly important, and, and that's what I do. Uh, and we work with all of them. So uh, you know, you learn those over time, uh, and then the adjustments and the changes that come about. Um, you know, I, I stay abreast of all that. And as I was just mentioning uh, a moment ago, that end of this business is changing drastically. Mm-hmm. We can still be successful with the roof claim uh, for you, but you've got to be a little bit more creative today. Uh, than you used to. Uh, they are really tightening up. So, you know, everybody you see getting a new roof today, just 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 keep this in mind. Nine out of ten of them, insurance is actually paying for them. So. Oh, that's interesting. Because yeah. I was thinking about it, Alan. I, uh, well, full disclosure, they took care, Big M Roofing took care of our roof. Mm-hmm. It was a very pleasant experience. It was kind of loud for one day. But, you know, it, it, it was worth the trade-off. But, um I don't know. We've never replaced a roof on our house. I, don't, I would guess the average homeowner isn't doing this, you know, more than once or twice, maybe in their whole lifetime. So, yeah, like you said, you're doing this 10 times a week. But for all of us, it is it is kind of daunting. It seems like a big it's it's a big thing to consider. Yeah. And most folks, too, you know, they think that's an expense they're going to have to pay for out of their pocket. OK, well, that brings up the the next big question then of when are right, well, besides the obvious and you have water getting into your house (laughs) what should somebody look for so uh, right now the real estate market's pretty hot a lot of people are selling their homes a lot of people are buying homes so we're you and i are going to walk up to this you know nice nice little home here uh in a variety of memphis is anywhere from uh we got turn of the century we got of course post-world war ii got a lot of post-world war ii housing Um, We've got a lot of 70s and 80s housing. So as we walk up to a pre-existing home, something over 20 years old, what are you looking for? What should I look for as the homeowner or potential buyer? Well, you know, the roof is obviously, you know, there's a lot of important parts to a, to a home, but certainly the roof has got to be way yes. up at the top because it's going to protect everything. It protects everything. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to have a good roof on a home, okay? Now, when we're talking about replacement in terms of insurance, though, remember that insurance is predicated on a couple of words, sudden and accidental, okay? Okay. So when we're talking about replacing a roof with insurance, there needs to be some kind of storm damage that's happened in the last year, let's say, okay? Right. You've got up to a year to go back and, and make a claim. So, you know, not everybody that we inspect qualifies, obviously, right. for roof replacement. But at least you know where you are. So we always start with that. I've not met anybody yet, Alan, that said, you know what, Jay, if you can get State Farm to pay for this roof, you know, uh, I don't want it. They don't do that, you know. So right. 
we uh, we uh, we we're gonna always see if we can uh, offer some assistance, you know, to you through through the vehicle of your uh, of your insurance company if we can. And then at the end of the day, um, if that works out, you're gonna be happy, and you can spend money on the other improvements that you wanted to do. Absolutely. Right, what's a common damage that you're looking for on a roof? Well, you're looking for wind damage, uh, crease shingles, missing shingles. Um, Bingo. And a lot, right. and a lot of times, you know, the wind's going to take down a big branch on the tree that's behind the house. That can be the catalyst for the claim as well. So yeah. there's a, there's a lot of ways that can start a claim for a roof. Hey Jay, I uh, I was working in a neighborhood in uh, Collierville, and I would say these are homes that were probably built in I don't know the 90s or something. And in this one little uh, cul-de-sac. <laughs> All the roofs had missing shingles, and I'm guessing these homes were built by the same builder. And I, my guess is they probably weren't attached right. I mean, obviously, right? Because uh, why would they just suddenly all fall off? And do you see a lot of that? And I guess my question is, if way back in the day somebody installed it incorrectly, where does somebody, well, uh, as a homeowner, are they covered for that? Or you know? well, they're not actually covered. You're not going to be covered for a roof for uh, uh, you know misapplication. That's for sure. Okay. okay. Um, that doesn't happen. But uh, what's happened is is the, 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 the technology today is just so much better. You're talking about homes in the 50s and 60s where you're lucky if you got 10 or 12 years out, you know, life right. out of a roof. And today's roofs, you know, we, yeah. can, we can get 50, 60 years out of them. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And, and um, uh, we're going to mention that when we come back. There's some pretty awesome uh, guarantees or I, I guess uh, warranties, you say, with some of the roofing systems that you offer. But, Jay, before we go to break, how do people get in touch with Big M Roofing? Well, uh, we're over on Pleasant Ridge Road, 5529 Pleasant uh, View, actually. I'm sorry, uh, Suite 2. And then I can be reached at 901-484-5645. Of course, BigMRoofingAndRemodeling.com is the, the website. We've got a great website, too. All the services, uh, a great gallery uh, from, of all the work that we do. Just go there. Awesome. So uh, you're listening to Tool Talk Radio uh, here on News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We're talking to our buddy Jay Hill with Big M Roofing and Remodeling. So if you've got any uh, questions, give us a buzz. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. And welcome back to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from Geeky Side TV, and our pal Jay Hill from Big M Roofing and Remodeling. In fact, you can give us a call at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling hotline <laughs> at 901-683-0989, or shoot us a text at that message, too, or at that number as well. So uh, if you're just tuning in, um, boy, do I feel sorry for you. You missed some pretty uh, fun content, too. We've, we've talked about sewage today, Alan. Oh, yeah. We've talked about toilets. We've talked about out-of-the-box uh, solutions for home improvement. And now we're talking about roofing. So, uh, Jay, we uh, you deal, like we say, you deal with um, homeowners that are trying to navigate the waters of making an insurance claim for their roofing. Not not only, you, you might just replace somebody's roof, but you sort of specialize on that because some people, they're not sure whether they qualify. I wasn't sure whether I qualify. That's one of the reasons we I was drilling you with questions when we met you at the homeowners or the uh, home show at, uh, at the Agri Center. But... Um, you know, we've been talking about the process and everything. So if somebody's out there and they and they're looking at their roof and it's like beyond, you know, okay, maybe they have leaks or maybe it just looks damaged in some way, what's the process? I mean, obviously they call you, but what what what's gonna happen next? Yeah, there's a lot of factors that would go into whether or not, you know, we would, you know, have an opportunity to be successful with an insurance claim. But it all starts with an inspection. You know, going to bring a team out there. We're going to literally get on the roof and climb it, do visual inspections, um, see how many shingles that are missing that are creased. Uh, Want to see where you are leaking? Uh, uh, you know, currently, if any, obviously, water intruding the home is a is is a big deal, and it's it's, it's part of your claim as well. Um, so we're going to find out exactly what's going on, and then from there, I can tell you based on the protocols of the insurance companies. You know whether or not we've got enough to move forward with a claim, or if this is going to be something that ultimately you're going to end up having to pay for out of your pocket. But at least you'll know where you stand. Yeah, I, I got to say one thing, Jay. Uh, what I like about uh, what you do with Big M Roofing, for one thing, Jay answers his phone. If you don't answer, <laughs> you'll call back within minutes. Like that, I try. Don't I try. take. The, I, I don't undersell that. How many times have we called somebody, Alan? And it's like three days later they they return your phone call or something. Oh, it's it's yeah. a it's a big thing. Yeah, it is a big thing. I'm amazed, yeah. really, that because I, I meet people all the time that are just absolutely just 
uh, excited that I just showed up or that I called back. They're like, man, the last guy we talked to, I mean, he said that he was going to come and he didn't. And I just didn't think you'd show up either. And it's, it's amazing uh, ex- exactly what kind of a, a market there is for folks that will show up and do what they're supposed to do. What do they say? 80% of success is just showing up. Yep. You know, I mean, <laughs> some, some there you go. Days, some there days, you go. Yeah. But you show up and um, it's somebody's probably out there thinking, oh, okay, I'm sure it's it draws out for, for weeks and months and everything. No, not necessarily. <laughs> so, Jade, so they, they show up, they, you walk them through, and, and you're just going to level with them if you think there's an option. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got to know where you are so you'll know what the solution is. But, yeah, it starts with that inspection. And like I said a second ago, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to know exactly where you stand with your roof and, and know what to do moving forward. Right. But, you know, we're successful, I'm going to say 80% of the time probably. If you live in the Mid-South in Memphis, uh, uh, obviously, we've got a lot of straight-line winds. And if you've got a you know, 12, 13, 14, 15-year-old roof, You've got some wind damage up there. I promise you, you do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's funny because I was thinking about that, Alan. You know, we talked about the uh, geology of where you live mm-hmm. or the, uh, is that right, the climates, the different, you know, oh, yeah. factors. I feel like, is are, are, do roofs take a, bi- a bigger beating out here in the Mid-South? I know we've got a lot of trees. we got sap. we got heat. We've got humidity. Is that pretty rough on a roof? Or? I tell you, they, they do. Uh, you know, Texas and moving this way forward from Arkansas is, 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 is a, is a is a real hotbed for what we do. Uh, I spent 35 years in Knoxville, and this never happens in Knoxville. You're kind of situated there in the in the Cumberland Plateau in the valley down there, and you just don't catch the winds like we catch here. So, yeah, where we live is a big part of the damage that we see. Yeah. Well, and also, we catch all four seasons. We do get four seasons, uh, but we don't get them. <laughs> we don't get them like you would up north. Right. Because we're not really designed and built for Wisconsin type weather because building for that would kill us during August. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can't really build for New Mexico weather because we're ready for the heat, but then we have Gulf Coast weather because we get downpours of rain. As we're sitting here this weekend, we all drove in with our windshield wipers on. Right. Of yeah. so I mean the mid south is, you know, the running joke is if you don't like the weather. It'll change. Oh yeah, because we get we we get such an example of everything. Of uh, plus, you know, we are at the you know we are kind of at the top of the delta base of the plains, so we get the winds. Yeah, we get the straight line winds. We get the occasional tornado. Yeah, we get hail. We get. I mean, when you start adding up, it's kind of like wow, we really do take a beating. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of that's we're right in the middle. We're the mid south. We're right in the middle of all. Well, this. and there's some roofs too, you guys, uh, that they might always. Okay, I I know we have a section of our roof. It is always in the shade, and it's under a giant tree. Mm-hmm. That that can't be good, right? It's it's dripping sap. It's it's not drying out like the rest of the roof is, and everything. Absolutely, like that. I think so, the big yeah. thing we deal with here is just the the heat that we get in the hottest part yeah. uh, of summer. I mean. Uh, you know, the, these shing- it gets so hot on these roofs, and especially in the attics, that these shingles literally bake from the inside and the outside. So that really cuts about 30% off of your roof life, uh, uh, and, and that's just because we're here in Memphis in the heat that we have. It's not that way, you know, uh, like in Los Angeles or wow. a place like that. So, yeah, the heat gets you. And the uh, that's one thing I've noticed. I don't know when these uh, ridge cap vents came into to place, but that's basically relieving that heat. Great and stuff. that's a new. Yeah. It, it looks kind of cool. I'll say that. And uh, that's that's that little thing on the top of your roof, folks. If you see the newer roofs, where you're like, what is that little uh, elevation there? Well, that's that's relieving that heat, and that's just making your shingles last longer. Best so. thing that the uh, roofing yeah. industry's come up with in many 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 years. But now, yeah, we would cut a couple of inches off each side of your ridge install the ridge cap and ridge vents there and now the whole attic has a place to vent out the uh, the heat and and that's just going to add many many years of life to your shingles speaking of that alan we did this again uh, the last time we talked to jay on the air we buried the lead i think and i think we did it again you at the end of uh at the end of the project uh, that you did at our place you were talking about the uh shingles and sort of the the warranty it's a pretty, it's a pretty impressive uh, warranty that we have on <laughs> on our roofing system. Can you tell us what that is? Because uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, uh, when people think about roofs, you know, I think most folks are thinking about, well, I'm I'm taking those shingles off and I'm putting other shingles on. And we concentrate on building roofing systems. In other words, the components that go with the shingles are as important, if not 
more important than, than the shingles themselves. So I'm yoked, of course, with GAF, the, the oldest manufacturer of building materials in North America, uh, and got the highest rated shingle uh, as well for many, many years. And with GAF as a master elite installer, if we use one of our lifetime shingles and then just make sure that we add the right components to it, like a good leak barrier, make sure that we use mm -hmm. a good starter strip, add those ridge vents, then at the end of the day, GAF is actually going to pass on to the customer a lifetime, non-prorated, transferable warranty on a roof. And it is all exactly like I just said, from the factory. Yeah, that sort of stupefied me, Alan. I was wow. like, wait, okay, so I could sell the house and the new homeowner gets this warranty passed on. He goes, yeah. So, I mean, that's a pretty big selling point. <laughs> great great selling tool if you're yeah. trying to sell a home, for sure, especially in the Mid-South. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's cool. And, you know, you guys, uh, if you if you ever see Jay at one of these uh, events, because you, you set up at a couple of, uh, you know, promotional events, you're going to see every insurance company's uh, logo up there. You're going to see, like, five-star ratings. You're going to see... Uh, all the certifications you have, the Better Business Bureau ratings and everything. So we, you know, because we don't just did, we we don't just endorse anybody, Jay. You know, we we have standards here at Tool Talk Radio. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay, that's, that's, good to know. <laughs> that's, that's good to know. That's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, no, it's 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 exciting too. So, uh, but but uh, once again, for people that just turned on the radio, how do they get in touch with Big M Roofing? Well, I can be reached at nine zero one four eight four five six four five. Of course, our website, uh, Big M Roofing and Remodeling. Uh, it's a great website, sh shows all of our services, uh, all of our ratings, all of our certifications, and so on. Uh, I'm a real hands-on contractor, uh, so uh, that's my personal cell number, the 901-484-5645. Give me a call, and uh, let's talk about what's going on and see if we can be of service. Yeah, and he'll he'll answer the phone. And like I say, if, if, he, if, he, if you have to leave a message, just start the uh, – Start the timer and see how many <laughs> seconds or minutes it takes him to call back. Because you will, you will call back. So. Absolutely, as long as it's not about reducing my interest rate on my credit card or the used car <laughs> warranty. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to talk to you. Or I'm buying a timeshare in Florida, you're you're mm, good to go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, since we've been talking about the roof so exclusively, but you also do remodeling. So, what are you actually seeing this summer? What what is what's the mix? Is anything standing out or I tell you, we, we have seen it all, uh, you know, especially the last I'd say nine months or so. We're doing an enormous amount of windows. Uh, doing, okay. doing decks. You know, we're we're doing uh, uh kitchen remodels, we're doing mm. uh garage remodels for extra bedrooms. We're you know, we're doing Oh, converting uh garages into living space. That's popular because that garages are we we talked about that before. That's an untapped space, man. Yeah. Great place to add square footage to your home and add value for sure. But we've we've seen the whole thing, Alan. We really have. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you one thing more than another. Mm, okay, uh, just it does nothing surprises me when the phone rings now what somebody's trying to accomplish. Well, what I'm thinking too, Jay, is uh, that in this market, so basically the market is the kind of thing where the houses sell instantly, you know, and so some, but buying the place is the challenge because you may not find it. So I bet you a lot of people are saying, all right, we're not going to move. We're going to convert the garage into a two extra bedrooms or something like that. So. Yeah, I think a lot of people have, and that's probably driven a lot of the work that we're talking about right now, for sure. Absolutely. Well, Jay, uh, Jay, of course, is one of our uh, great sponsors. We love uh, we love working with Jay. We see each other a lot because we're we're sending each other business, and uh, we, we strongly and highly recommend Big M Roofing and Remodeling. Well, thank but, you. Jay, you're going to be a regular a part of the part of the crew here on Tool Talk Radio. Looking so, forward to it. Looking forward to it. So, uh, um, anyway, you're listening to Tool Talk Radio. Uh, uh, here at News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis, with our 100,000 watts of broadcast power. Boy, I love that thing, Alan. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, Alan, we're going to talk about the next million-dollar idea. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan on News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. And hey, welcome back to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Woodturning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from Geeky Side TV. 
Uh, you can give us a call or text at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And, of course, uh, while you've got your phone in your hand, scoot over to Facebook and make sure you go to the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page. Give us a like. Send us messages, you know, polite messages, I hope. Mm. Send us pictures. Send <laughs> us video of your home improvement triumphs and tragedies. And uh, if you uh, check, you will get a little sneak peek at our must-have item of the week, too, so you don't have to wait for that. But uh, that is coming up here shortly, Alan. But um, before we went to the break, uh, Alan, we were talking about the next million-dollar idea slash the future of home improvement because somebody is going to do this. In fact, I think you told me somebody's already when we were talking off the mm-hmm. air, somebody is already kind of doing this anyway. But my my keyword was making this affordable. This is for every home. OK, here's my idea, Alan. We're going to call these um, let's call this adjustable luminescence. And that, yes, that okay. is the new name for my band as well. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mood walls, you know, we're thinking mm-hmm. so basically um okay we if you want a color on your wall you paint the wall and five years later when you're tired of that color you paint it a different color wouldn't it be cool if you you said you know what i want that i want that uh i want the color of the wall to be a light gray right now and tonight i want that to be a a a blue you know go figure I think all of this is completely possible. It could I think our walls are going to become I don't I don't want to say digitized, Alan, but here's my here's my uh here's my approach cuz mm. I know we've already got like digital, we've got digital billboards, we we can digitize things, but to me that sounds expensive. So what I'm thinking of is if if uh folks if you've ever taken a um like I don't know, a small flashlight from your phone and shown it up uh the ed, uh against the edge of a piece of glass it's interesting how light will travel through there, especially if it's a frosted mm, it piece of glass. Right. It has to be frosted, actually, to carry some color. But with the way um, we have uh, LEDs that can change color instantly, like I, I, I just installed some rope lighting that right. had a, a remote control. If you want blue or red mm-hmm, or green, or mm-hmm, and they had mm-hmm. about 15 different colors, you, you push a button and it turns that color. Well, I'm like, well, what if they got this to where you could have 500 colors and you just turn a dial you make it the color you want so i'm picturing alan a thin piece of frosted plexiglass that goes over the drywall something you could put a nail through and and fix it if you had to and you just change the color there would be a light source either at the baseboard or the crown molding and you have uh, adjustable luminescence tell me why uh, i'm crazy or uh, no no let's round table this no no Uh, actually what you are describing already exists and can be done Okay, but I'm going to see what you've proposed. I'm going to raise you squid technology. Talk to me. squid. Okay, squid anytime technology. you can use the word squid, I'm in. Is right, that an acronym or is that no? A, okay. It is a squid. <laughs> a, a squ- <laughs> we are talking. We're big supporters of the here. squid, right? Okay. Of all right, the squids, octopi, cuttlefishes, and stuff like that all have what amazing ability? Yeah, you. Tell me. They I'm thinking can of these. Change colors. You're talking about these ones that are like when you go down to the Titanic and you see these l- like uh, fish that light up and everything. Or not, like, not bioluminescence. We're okay. talking about the actual ability to change mood colors like a chameleon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of uh, what we have is chroma spore technology. Chroma spore. Chroma spore. So let's take like a tiny twenty sided dice, like you'd find in a D and D game. All our each, nerds know what that oh is. Oh, yes. Every, yeah. Everybody out there that listens to Geek Tank Radio just perked right up. Oh, yeah. Uh, so let's make each side of that dice a different color. Okay. All right. We can now embed these chromospores into paint, material, a tattoo. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see where you're oh, going with this. And okay. now they can be electronically stimulated to not only change color, but to create images. Would these glow, Alan? I guess I'm wondering, like, I, I, I want to stick with the walls here. Right. Are these going to glow, or could you adjust it to the, in other words, they give off sort of an, a, a nice warm light, or do these, can they get fine-tuned to where it just looks like a paint color? Well, it is already fine-tuned to look like a paint color. However, you could always add again, with the other technologies, all of the effects that you're describing. Mm, Yeah. So that you could actually walk into a room and have the room 
take you to the fancy museum you wanted to go to that day or just be that soothing soft forest green that is the color that relaxes you and of course it'll get to the point alan where we won't even have pictures on our wall we'll just have digital images like a digital billboard yes, exactly. that'll, that'll that you could if you get tired of one you just hit a button and you put the other one and up if you there. have seen 4g advertising right <gasps> Oh my gosh! And and Alan, what uh, you know, folks, you, if you're new to Tool Talk Radio, one of the other uh, motives that we have for bringing you the next billion dollar idea here mm-hmm. on Tool Talk Radio is it, this is safe for the ages. We we put the idea out there, so our goal <laughs> is if somebody comes out and invents this stuff, we can claim it was our idea, get a percentage of the royalties, and, and you retire know. forever in luxury. Absolutely. Yes. So we're gonna we're gonna keep following. We're gonna definitely be following this one with uh, with great interest. But Alan, you know who else we follow? with great interest brown refrigeration Mm -hmm. anytime we need uh any uh heating or air conditioning needs if we need the uh the clean air system with the remy halo if we need a smart home system there's only one name to call it's the good people at brown refrigeration they have a very uh, easy to remember website at brownref.com or you can give them a call at 901-362-1881 Alan, we're going to take a quick break uh, here on Tool Talk Radio on News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. And when we come back, we're going to give you our must-have item of the week. And welcome back to Tool Talk Radio coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Woodturning here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from Geeky Side TV. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, call us on call us or text us on the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. Or you can contact us through the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and uh, give us a like. Share, share the show with your friends. Um, and, uh, of course, if you uh, miss any of our show, if you if you want to go back and listen to any of our shows, go to tooltalkradio.com. And uh, Alan's uh, uh, studiously, what's the word? Uh the laboriously laboriously uh <laughs> logging in all of those and which, which is one of the fun things about tool talk radio you can listen to any of the shows anytime you want 24 hours a day just wait till we start racking up these episodes oh yeah people can binge listen 24 hours a day to tool talk radio i say just such a thought joe such yeah. a thought <laughs> you have fun with that everybody <laughs> hey alan um uh we uh you know the next million dollar idea, follow that. I mm. should say the next billion dollar idea. We discussed that in our previous episode. And um, if you're out there and you're an inventor that that, that likes the uh, adjustable luminescent walls that we proposed, um, give us a call. We want a cut of the uh, cut of the action. And, uh, <laughs> but Alan, it's time for our must have item of the week. And mm. uh, I've already posted this on our Facebook page, uh, which is another reason to go to Tool Talk Radio on Facebook. But uh, tell people what I'm holding up here, Alan. All right. It is just a simple little bar with a crossbar on it, and it looks like the crossbar is adjustable. Yeah, it's a, called a T-bevel. This it is an is. aluminum T-bevel. And, uh, folks, if you – it's 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 a lock nut. It's a piece of metal. It's kind of like a tri-square, you know, if people know right. what that – like a framing square. But, it, right. you know. This is one of those tools, when you look at it, you go, that is stupidly simple. Well, if you look at it in a, in a store, you're not going to know what it is. Uh, but right. Yeah. Just until you open it, it go, up. Yeah. What, what is this? It's 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 a. It, the reality is, this is one of the most mind-bogglingly useful tools, especially if you're cutting stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, l- let me share a story. Alan. Here we go. So basically, I'm building a, I'm building a patio cover for somebody. I need to attach the two by eight rafters into the roof line, the existing roof Mm -hmm. line. Well, every roof line has a different pitch to it. Yes. So I take this T bevel, I loosen up the one edge and I put it against the, uh, I put it against the soffit. I put it against the roof and then I lock the, the, the nut down. And suddenly I have the exact angle that those rafters have to be cut at because you can't, instead of doing a bunch of math, you know, which I'm not very good at, you just do this. <laughs> it works. It's like you say, if you've got a, if you've got a, a, a weird angle on a, on a piece of door casing, if you've got something that is not a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle, this thing is awesome. You know? Well, this fits in with uh, one of my favorite phrases of 30 years of stupid. Yeah. Because when you go into an older home or an older business or older building, you don't know what happened. You don't know what Amen, they did. Brother. <laughs> you, know, you really, yeah. you honestly have no idea what they did, how they did it, or, and I'm going to again throw this in, buildings and homes are not static. No. They move. They settle. They shift. 
So what was once a very perfect angle, well, it's now 30, 40 years later, and it may not be so perfect. Perfect example, Alan, if you're putting some... Uh, um some of these older homes, like you talked about, some of these turn of the century homes, mm -hmm. you may be putting a, a piece of a door casing on a floor. Well, if that floor is not flat, nope. it's, it's going to sit weird. And I've seen floors that are, you could put a marble on there and it'll just roll <laughs> to the other wall. So this this type of thing, it's just, it's super handy. I think it's 10 or 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. And that is a must have item. And the, the other thing is, your kids will like it. It's a safe thing for your kids to learn about, uh, I don't know, angles and geometry. And uh, it's it's just cool. You can trace things. You can make designs with it. You can, uh, you know, I don't know if you can use it for self-defense, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it fits right in your tool uh, in your tool holster, Alan. I know you're mm, into the holster I'm a holster situation. guy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's it. Our must-have item of the week, the aluminum tea bevel. Mm -hmm. All right, Alan. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, I just want to say something. Just a reminder. If you need a deck or a pergola or a patio cover, or somebody to come over with their tea bevel and measure mm. angles at your house, <laughs> or anything made out of wood for the outside of your home, make sure you give me a call at 901-921-7105, or visit uh, my easy-to-remember website, thorshomes.com. One other thing I want to mention, Alan, you know, we're assembling the... Let's call this the Avengers of Home Improvement uh, Specialists. So, you know, we've got our buddy Jay Hill. We've got Larry Brown. We've got uh, Rick Bowman coming up, uh, our realtor. We've got a list of... Uh We've got a list of contractors and business people in the pipeline that are that are joining the team. So I don't know if this is the Avengers or the Justice League or whatever. If this was a Justice League, you're cyborg, right? You're. Oh, well, I, I get I to be, obviously be. I call dibs on Batman. Anyway, if you want to join up, give us a call. Give me a call at nine zero one nine two one seven one zero five, and 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 we'll talk. So. Um, but Alan, uh, tell us real quick what's going on with Geeky Side TV. That is sort of your milieu, right? Well, yeah, yeah, we have quite a, quite a few shows uh, rocking back and forth right now. Of uh, one of the big ones we have is uh, here in Memphis is on the scene, starring Kate Mobley, and she interviews a wide variety of independent filmmakers around the Memphis area. Awesome. So they can. Pop and there's quite on. a number of them. Oh uh, well, the uh, Memphis Film Prize is going on right now, and they just announced their top ten list. So for those of you that are really uh, want to see who's coming up next, you want to meet these people before they get really famous. Yeah, that's the time to do it. Now, yeah, now we're now we're talking. Of go to you can uh, go look up the Memphis Film Prize or you can just go to geekysidetv.com and click on on the scene and you can check out her latest episodes. Absolutely. And if you're a content creator, get in touch with Alan because you may wind up on TV. It could happen. TV, Apple Fire Stick, mm -hmm. all the good ones. So good. Geeky Side TV. Well, Alan, I don't know if this is going to wind up on Geeky Side TV, but uh, you know, we, we we like to bring you our critter oh, yes. our critter battles, critter our critter wars here on Tool Talk Radio. Uh you introduced this was this last week? Mm -hmm. Little Timmy, the, the raccoon that's the terrorizing tale of Little Timmy. Yes, and it, yeah. and it continues. Well, it turns out that they missed misidentified little timmy is it little Susie or is well it, it is now <laughs> I, i'm going to say little timmy has grown up to be big tina oh okay 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 yeah sounds like a lot of okay i'm so go so ahead big, sir. big tina has now shown up with the twins <laughs> So the the Boy, team, somebody doesn't know their uh well, biology well, on this just, one okay we're just gonna leave it as you know, where there was one raccoon showing up and, you know, fleecing the cats out of their food, there is now becoming a small gang of raccoons showing up. So uh, well, I, I'm going to point out that the raccoons are, while they're cute and they're lovely and they're fuzzy and they're a natural animal, please, ladies and gentlemen, do not feed animals randomly after dark yeah i blame the i blame the neighborhood on this one alan because i i didn't you tell me that that little timmy became sort of a mascot of the neighborhood oh, yeah. i mean obviously nobody wants to get out their shotgun and uh unless well, you're larry cute, brown i know but, you know uh, they're, but they're cute and they're fuzzy and well, you don't then they encourage up, that right and right. then they're they're tearing the screens off your attic and moving in with you right. of you know so you know raccoons are very smart very powerful and they are also a little bit of a mafia. Well, I wonder they're territorial, right? They'll they'll oh, stake their claim. Right? Well, they kind of get little territories, and once the food is kind of, I, I'm going to say, uh, once you know protection is being paid, yeah, more and more and more of them will continue <laughs> to show up. 
Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, so little Timmy's kicked in. So it's, it's what did you say? Big Tina it's now and Big the Twins. Tina. Big Tina Big and the Tina Twins. Big Tina and the Twins is a good name yeah, for a Big band. Yeah, Big Tina and the Twins <laughs> is uh, showing up. And, you know, if you normally fed them about 7 o'clock, if it's 8 o'clock and you haven't fed them yet, you know, there's a... On yeah. the door, and uh, they're looking for chow. Of uh, so the ongoing, are they going to get moved to the swamp or not? Is an ongoing adventure. But I thought I'd give you a quick update that the one has now become many. Well, uh, the numbers are growing, and now the neighborhood is going. Well, you know, it was cute when it was just the one, and I'm going, yeah, yeah, told you. Yeah, now they're going to have to come together as a neighborhood and, and figure this out. So, Alan, you know, here on Tool Talk Radio, we don't like to just laugh at other people's misfortune. We're all about solutions. Right. So what what sort of things can the average uh, homeowner in, little, or in Big Tina's neighborhood do to make sure she's not camping out in, uh, on their property? Well, again, the number one thing is do not leave out food after dark. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have a backyard pet or a lot of people get kind hearted and feed the neighborhood cat or whatever. And that's fine. Uh, however, make sure you feed during the daytime. And when they're done, take up the food because <laughs> you don't want to be attracting. Well, we're yeah. in the Mid-South, so this is no lie. In one property in Cordova. OK, I'm going to get right over in the middle of the city of I have run into deer at the paint store early in the morning, <laughs> in the parking lot. Yeah. You cannot make this stuff up. I I, of, I don't doubt you, Alan. And yeah. for anybody up along the green line, I oh, love yeah. the green line. The green line is the greatest thing ever. But guess what happens after dark? Oh, yeah. It's still the green line because now the deer, the skunks, the raccoons, the armadillos, the <laughs> all of our lovely Mid-South creatures now have this amazing green line. Sure. In and out and through your neighborhoods. Now, I'm not advocating anything about the green line other than enjoy it, but I'm pointing out, guys, you got you, you can't attract them to your house. Right, right. Because once you it's it's you know it's kind of like getting the attention of the stand up comedian. Yeah. Once you've got them picking on you, they're gonna keep coming. Absolutely. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be following Big Tina and the Twins' uh, career with great interest. Oh, I guess I, we need video though, Alan. Oh, yeah. Tell I'm somebody trying. out I'm there to, I'm to set up it. their uh, 24 hour camera. So, well, Alan, hey, uh, uh, in a minute we're gonna shift gears from the uh, primal uh, destruction of property from uh, creatures <laughs> into uh, how best to purchase a property. We're gonna Ooh, talk real yeah. estate and uh, uh, a little spoiler here. Uh, we got Rick Bowman coming in from uh, Weikert Realtors. Rick and I have a, uh, a unique history, Alan. Uh, I'm just oh. going to come out and, uh, and tell people he helped me purchase Prince Mongo's home, which <laughs> I think we're going to I think we're going to swap some war stories about so, that. So he's still making that up to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's if it, it, put it this way, if you can sell, if you can. If you can make that transaction happen, mm. every other transaction is a piece I'm of cake. I'm still wondering what you did with all those toilets that were on your roof. Yeah, yeah. So people, uh, you're gonna you're gonna learn uh, shortly here the uh, the uh, the secret history of uh, one of the uh, most unique real estate uh, transactions ever in in history. So, uh, Alan, I, I I guess I don't know that I want to tell people to go Google where my house is. No. but I'll tell you this, no. people, Google Prince Mongo. Uh, Let's see. Prince Mongo's house, toilets on the roof. Yep. That's that's enough. You're gonna find you're gonna <sighs> see what my house looked like used to before we purchased it. But yep. it is it is interesting, Alan, because um, you know, there's all sorts of real estate transactions. One of the things I think we're gonna unpack when we uh, when we come back well, from break is uh th there's no two sales are, are alike. And let's face it, people aren't People might buy and sell a home once or twice in their life. So to them, it's a big deal. And you need somebody that can navigate that. Well, and you've just pointed out something perfect. Yeah. Every home has a history. Sure. Even if it's brand new. But right. I promise you, every home you purchase has a history, how it was built, who built it, when they built it, and heaven help you who lived in it and what they did to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's you, an adventure. It's yeah. <laughs> welcome to home ownership. And it's fluid and ever-changing, and uh, no, no, no two transactions are the same. No two markets are the same. No. Of, I mean, you could even buy a house 
built by the same builder at the same time across the street from each other, but they've had different occupants for the last 30 years. Yeah, so we're going to navigate those waters. Uh, we're going to talk to our buddy Rick Bowman from White Kirk Realtors. He's bringing a special celebrity guest, too, people, oh, so okay. stay tuned. It's going to be exciting. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios here on News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. And welcome back to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from Geeky Side TV. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989 uh, or visit the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and communicate with us there. Be polite. Don't make fun of the way I sound. Don't insult me. <laughs> Don't talk about uh, Alan's you know, cooking or anything. But we, we'd love to hear from you. So send us uh, especially pictures or videos of your home improvement triumphs uh and tragedies let's face it we 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 thrive on other people's misfortune you like the triumphs you always <laughs> give me the tragedies it's okay give us a like share it with your friends and of course if you miss anything uh from tool talk radio if you miss any of our uh, episodes never fear alan will post all the episodes at tooltalkradio.com so indeed uh we got a special guest alan an another one that joined the tool talk uh justice league or is this mm. the tool talk avenger i don't know the yeah. you're you're the comic nerd go for it <laughs> uh, I like the Justice League because you could be Cyborg and I get to you be get Batman. You get to be Batman. There you go. And we got our buddy Rick Bowman from Weikert Realtors. Rick, uh, welcome to the show, first of all. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, he and I have a, a long history, Alan, <laughs> through some bizarre real estate transactions. I, I noticed that we're doing that this is your life today, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I, I I did promise that, Rick, later in the show we're going to share the story as much as we can publicly of the uh, purchase of Prince Mongo's home that you helped me pull off uh it was crazy it was different it was creative yeah it was sort of a you were miracle. you were a trooper well <laughs> i'm trying to figure out how you got a zamboni indeed put it <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had to purchase a house alan where you had to do you had to paint the house you had to do a faux finish on the tree because it was covered with paint mm. and you had to remove toilets from the roof of the house before the mortgage company would sign off on it. That, uh, that would be no. That's my, <laughs> that's my history. But uh, Rick, we, we've been talking about it. The real estate market is, well, I mean, it's different and it's ever changing. You know, you've been in the market forever. You, you know, you've made it through 2008. You've made it through uh, all sorts of dynamics. And that's kind of the thing. You're, that's what you thrive on. You're innovative. Yeah, we've, uh, of course, I, you know, uh, Two second resume, 35 years in the business, Memphian, uh, you know, my entire life. Um, started companies in 99, um, 150 agents, three offices, and 07, I thought I was going to be a millionaire, right? I remember those days, yeah. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. I, I was humbled very quickly with yeah. the crash of the mortgage market. and uh, But we were fortunate. We owned a mortgage company that also did refinances, and so that kind of helped us survive. We started a credit company to help those that uh, failed during the mortgage crisis, restore mm -hmm. credit, get back into the market. And I kind of started over again when I was 52. Yeah. Uh, glad it happened to me when I was 52, not 62. But <laughs> uh, anyway, we've, um, we've, we've done well. The market is, is constantly changing, going through ups and downs, seasonal uh, and then crisis like the mortgage meltdown, then the foreclosures, and everybody did foreclosure business for a while, and that faded away, and then and prices started going up. A um, couple of stats. Uh, in 07, there were 13,000 houses on the market. Oh, okay? and you're talking about Memphis, in the Memphis Mem area? In the Memphis area, four-county area. Wow. Okay? 13,000. Um, sales were brisk. Sales were great. Uh, tons of houses out there to buy, and then... It, it dwindled after the foreclosures, and it continued to go down. Prices went down. Since 2012, prices have started going back up, but inventory's been going down. Right now, uh, I checked this morning, 1,300 houses on the market. Wow. Right now. Single family, single family yeah. homes. Wow. Right. right. So I, I was going to share this. At, uh, a way to explain it is sales are great. So how can sales be so great if there's nothing to buy okay and nothing to sell and somebody explained it the other day so well here's a good analogy like a bathtub you got a bathtub full of water water's running full stream drains draining full stream tons of sales 
bathtub's full. Right now, the bathtub's got about an inch of water in it. No, oh. <laughs> but but everything so still running. Everything's yeah. still running. Everything's still draining. You yeah, know? yeah. But you know, uh, Rick, I will say this because I remember. You know, like I said, I've known Rick. I don't know twenty twenty five years. I've known him quite a while. Back when uh, you know I just started my uh, remodeling company and my my contracting business. Rick was one of my first. Uh, customers i guess you could say he was sending me work but rick i think you have good instincts because i as i recall we were talking to you about some ideas we we had in mind back in 2005 and you had this thing of you might want to just sit on those things for for a while you sort of had an inkling three years in advance that things were not hunky dory in the whole in the housing market as i recall so i respected the fact that you you could anticipate stuff I, you know, it's always going to change, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of um, agents, real estate companies, mortgage companies get used to what they're doing, like I did for a while, and then you're not prepared for change. So um, my company and myself personally, I've always, I've always had my hands in a lot of different things. Do you do commercial? Sure. <laughs> do you, you know, will you work with a builder? Sure. Do you still work with buyers, sellers, everything? You know, right. foreclosures? Sure. You know, and if you diversify, then you can survive. Yeah. Well, and and as we said, too, uh, we were talking about this before the break, Alan, with, um, you know, every transaction is different and a transaction mm. can evolve halfway through. You just helped my sister, my sister and uh, my nephew moved to Memphis recently. And she does talk like you, by the way. Yeah, she's got yeah. the northern <laughs> accent. But uh, <laughs> It's they had frightening beyond human comprehension. They had an issue up. They, you know, they had an issue uh, with their realtor that I'm not going to name names, but uh, up in up in Chicago, and it could have thrown the whole thing off the rails. And somehow, <laughs> you you made it. You know, you know, you made it happen, and you had to be flexible and and adjust I, you know, halfway through the transaction. I made a lot of phone calls. Yeah, I made a lot of phone calls. Stirred a lot of people up. And uh, I don't know that I really did anything other than be the squeaky wheel, but that's what you got to do sometimes. Well, you saved her. I, I guess I can say this on the air. You saved her ten thousand dollars off the buying price, so she's she's taking that money and she's going to use that to uh, to invest in in fixing up the house and everything. So I mean, she she's she's going to be singing your praises forever. So yeah, we, oh, she's a sweet girl. Yeah. So, but uh, but um, I don't know, man. Is it is. Is the real estate market ever been like this here in Memphis? Because I've never seen anything like this where you're getting above your asking price. Your, uh, you know, the houses sell within 24 hours. No, I, like I agree. And uh, again, to put some numbers on it for perspective, I tracked uh, what appreciation has done since 2012. Two, three, four, five percent a year going up, you know, every year. Uh, last year went up 12.3 percent. Wow. In our, lot, in our man. market. Yeah. Okay. And so a lot of people ask me the question, I say, well, you know, I don't want to buy now because what about the collapse? It's going to collapse and I'm, I will have overpaid. You, you can't go up 12% after 10 years of growth and then it collapse. It may level off. Right. That's okay. fine. But let's say next year it's only 10% or the year after that's only 8%. Yeah. It's still wise. Okay. Cool. Well, I, I like the fact uh, you're another uh, you're another person that actually answers your phone. And now this is something that's cool about Weikert. You've got uh, it's sort of a one stop shop, right? Right, right. We're the only company in town that uh, has real estate sales, nationwide uh, relocation. Uh, I've owned a mortgage company for 22 years, so we qualify our buyers if they if they choose. Makes it a seamless operation, and uh, credit scores have become. Um, more critical in the mortgage process it's always been a situation where if you didn't have the score you didn't you didn't get to buy a house right but now what the lenders have done is they have tiered the interest rates based on credit score so you can buy a house with a 620 you got a 640 you get a better rate 660 better rate every 20 points gets you a better rate so a lot of folks you know we do credit assistance and it's not necessarily for somebody always that's had credit problems it's for someone that's got good credit and we help them better credit well and they get a better rate i was gonna say this rick too because if you're if you're let's suppose you're some young uh, couple you just got married you're living in some dumpy apartment and hopefully in a couple of years you're gonna buy a house call call uh white right now you could start getting them on the road to beefing up their credit 
it, you know, sort of planning ahead so that when it's time to pull the trigger, they can really yeah, you know, it, hit the I, ground running. And I get these calls all the time where somebody says, hey, we're thinking about buying a house, but we're working on credit. Uh, real quickly, what that means to me is they've signed up for some type of credit program that has nothing to do with buying a home. Right. Okay. Because you can, you can buy credit repair anywhere right now. And I get, owning a mortgage company, I get calls from people selling credit repair. Uh, I talked to a guy the other day, and I said, what do you do? And he said, well, we do this. I said, well, you do that, and then what? And he said, well, we do this. And I said, well, okay, so here's what we do. And he said, well, oh, wow. So you're, <laughs> you're way ahead of me. <laughs> I said, you might want to talk to your boss about that. Yeah, I, I'll tell you this, folks. If you're if you're even thinking about buying a home, or if you've got kids that are going to buy a, a, a home, get them in touch with the, with the good people at Weikert Realtors. And how do, how do they do that, Rick? Oh, 901-202-2000. And, uh, uh, you know, they'll get in touch with me. I'm the owner, but I still work with customers every day, probably 30 personal transactions a year. Um, I will say um, something else about the credit, too, and getting started. My son was 18, so an 18-year-old typically has no credit. Uh, the program that we operate, uh, being that it's geared to buy a house, we will help them establish the right credit profile that the credit scoring model is looking for. So my son, Tyler, he was, he was at the point after six months where he could have purchased a home. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's <laughs> that's excellent. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. So, and mm -hmm. and it's 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 all about knowing the system, knowing how, knowing what uh, you know. Yeah. Well, people I, I had for. I was uh, reviewing credit reports before scores existed. You know, back when we didn't have salt, pepper, we hunted wild animals for food. You know, all that. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're one of those nerds. So yeah. So, okay. So when the credit scores came out, I'm like, what is this? But anyway, we've learned it. He eats, breathes, and sleeps the stuff. You know, you think you're kind of a dork and a nerd. Nerd, Alan, when it comes to cooking, you, you got nothing on Rick. Uh, he, he's, that's how he relaxes at night, reading credit scores and, uh, you know, thinking about real well, estate. Well, the thing is, you know, I, uh, doing property taxation at the same time he was doing that, I, I understand exactly what he's talking about. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you're listening to Tool Talk Radio, uh, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios here at News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We're going to keep talking real estate, and when we come back, Rick is going to introduce us to a special celebrity guest. And welcome back to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from Geeky Side TV. Uh, you can reach us, if, you, if you're quick, at the uh, Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline. You can call or text us at 901-683-0989 and uh, get in touch with us that way. Or, of course, you can always go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page, which we want. We want you to join up, follow mm -hmm. the, uh, join the, join the family, and uh, share the Tool Talk experience with everybody you know. <laughs> Yeah, have fun with that. And, of course, if you miss any of our uh, past episodes, you can go to uh, tooltalkradio.com. And Alan is very good about getting the shows posted and uh, edited so you can listen. So, well, Rick, uh, this is pretty cool, man. We get a lot of added value having, uh, you know, having uh, Rick Bowman from Weikert Realtors is, is, is our special guest and part of the Tool Talk Radio uh, crew. But you brought a celebrity with you, sir. Yes, I did. Let's Introduce her, please. Yep, yeah. Let's talk tools for a minute. I'm on a radio program. Yeah. Okay, I know what I can do, what I can't do, so I brought an extra tool. I've got a, I've got a Kelly. You realize that's not a good. <laughs> Isn't that kind of an insulting? Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, we have a Kelly Cruz in the studio. Absolutely, welcome to the show. Woohoo! Yeah. 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 Well, for those who don't know, Kelly Cruz, of course, because we do get listeners outside of the Memphis area. Kelly Cruz is a sort of a staple in radio here. You've been uh -huh. on a, you were Rock 103. Yep. The, the rock, uh, what was it? Uh, 80s rock. and 90s. Yeah, 80s and 90s. Then you moved over to the, the flip side, uh, <laughs> FM 100, pop music with uh, your yeah. buddy Ron Olson. I had, yeah, I had fun with Ron. It was a great time. Yeah, and then uh, Memphis Lifestyle. And so then I, yeah, I wanted to do my own television show because Memphis has so many cool people in it that weren't getting, you know, some attention. So I did that for a while. I'm just kind of, I was kind of all over the place. <laughs> and then you met Rick Bowman and decided to throw away your career uh, in broadcasting <laughs> and media and get into the real estate game. Is that you how know, it happened? I mean, well, I've always <laughs> loved real estate, but... But um, working with Rick was such a, a joy and still is, obviously, because we've been together off and on for almost nine years. 
And the thing I love about working at Weikert Realtors Benchmark is that we really are a one-stop shop. I mean, if you need anything, we can fix it. We can help you. You can come in cold turkey, walk in our, you know, walk in our office over off of Hacks Cross, and we'll take you from knowing nothing to being able to know everything very quickly. And Absolutely. we have our own mortgage company, and that's huge. And another thing is a lot of people – um, will go talk to a mortgage person or whatever, and then they just still feel like they don't know anything. But we not only get you prepared to buy a house, um, Sheila Lipman in our mortgage facility, she can actually underwrite people without even you picking a home out yet. So you are 100% ready to go. All the paperwork's done. You just have to find the house. And you kind of have to be that way these days, right? I mean, and that you got to, because you can't oh, just yeah. say, well, we'll figure it, give us a couple weeks to sleep on it. No, yeah. that's that ain't happening <laughs> yeah, these days. I'll, I'll so. interject this. We had a sales meeting a couple of weeks ago, and, and basically I, I made a 20-point or 10-point list of how to win a house, because mm-hmm. that's almost what it's like right now. A nice house, you have to position yourself to win it, because you've got to compete. Some houses have 10 mm-hmm. offers on them, some have 18 offers on them, some 25. And if you don't hit the right points to make yours stand out in front of a seller, you won't win. No. Uh-uh. I, I, can I say something, too, real quick? Uh, I I don't want to give away addresses or anything, but I just want to reiterate, Rick, Rick, uh, my buddy Rick Bowman here got my sister a home in Colonial Acres, which is a really hot neighborhood right now, for $10,000 under the asking price. Incredible. I still don't know how you did it, but that's the stuff that you get, you know. Uh, move fast and ask questions. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, it truly is an amazing time in real estate, and I, you know, I, I'm floored at how quickly real estate is moving in memphis it's unbelievable i tell people and i tell people and i tell people i meet with you know young people and i tell them this is how it's going and they can't believe it and then the reality hits and they're like oh my god i mean this is insane i go it really is it's like jumping on a train that goes 200 miles an hour (laughs) and you have to make decisions really quick or you're gonna be thrown off i mean it's it's you got to be 100 percent ready and a weikert realtor benchmark will absolutely get you 100 percent ready yeah and and so how long have you been over there well Uh, i started with rick back in the early uh 2000s and then i had a little my daughter wanted to go to University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, and I'm one of those moms, and I had to go with her. <laughs> She's like, Mom, I'm not living with you. And I go, that's fine, that's fine. I just couldn't, I wasn't ready to be the empty nester. You're a helicopter parent? Absolutely. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, my daughter won't let me anymore. She's got, we, I've got grandkids now and a great son-in-law, but um, it, it was, it's been a wild ride. But um, actually, she left and moved back here because she fell in love with my now son-in-law, and, and then I moved back. How's oh. that? I didn't, okay. There's a lot of little. Yeah. We're gonna have to talk oh, off. There is some and injury. Going and I, I have to tell a <laughs> Kelly story. She called me. She said, "Well, I'm moving to Chattanooga." I said, "Really? Well, I don't. I don't want you to move." She said, "Well, I found a house, and and I just have to have it." I said, "Well, what's it like?" She said, "Well, I don't know. I hadn't seen the inside of it yet." I true no no for a real estate agent. I, I did enough though. I actually walked down the driveway, kind of creepy. I was stalking the house. I saw it on the internet. I kind of figured out what it was going to look like. Yeah, nobody is boring over there at White Cart. No, no. <laughs> it, 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 I'll tell you this too. You guys have a great kitchen and a foosball table in the oh, waiting room. Oh, right? yeah. oh, Rick no. is so much fun. I mean, he is all about fun. We have a pool table in our office. How's that? Oh, you're up in the game. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, right. and ping pong too. You know, okay. and basketball. You hadn't been there in a while. Got, yeah, you got, don't. Got to let some stress off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but I mean, gotta, you can even you know. play with your clients. What the heck? You know, we got a refrigerator. No, well, there you go. Yeah. There well, you go. Really well, there cool. is something to this because, like we said, I mean, this is a. <laughs> You guys do this every day, but you might buy one or two homes or a few in your entire life, and boy, you want to make sure you do it right. So I mean, that's, right. So it, it it is good to have uh, to be in capable hands, and actually, let's face it, you guys aren't boring either, which is. Which we is are good. fun. Yeah. We are fun, and we make the process fun because it can be so stressful. So let's tell some Joe stories. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, can I? Okay, Alan, you had a well, comment. Well, that, that so. was the direction I was kind of aiming here. I was kind of like, all right. Of I have my infamous question I love to ask everybody, and I'm going to look directly at Kelly, I think, this time and go, all right, what is the one thing you think people need to know before they called you? What do you wish they had in their head mm-hmm. when they call you and go, I'm either buying or selling a house? The, the real reason, I need to know the real reason why 
the why. Be honest. Yes. Be, I want to, you know, why you're moving, why you think now is the time to get a house. Because a lot of people just flippantly say, you know what, um, the house isn't right for us. We're living in right now. Well, why is that? What happened? What changed in your life? I want to know mm. the why. And it could be, honestly, I mean, I've had it down to a couple arguing. The wife wanted a bigger closet. I mean, <laughs> and the husband's like, this is so disgusting. We're buying a house because my wife... Well, that's a good enough reason. Well, the guys I mean, will live anywhere. We'll live anywhere. <laughs> you know, if yeah, it wasn't I, for the girls, we would not have a business. Well, right. you know, I've, I've recently had a customer that the husband had to put a pool table somewhere, and mm-hmm. I found the perfect house, and he is so thrilled. And he the, he let the wife just run the show with me. Mm-hmm. I mean, he barely came to, you know, the showings. She would just do FaceTime with him and show the house. But we found this house, and I said... Okay, lady, you know, your husband's going to have to place to put that pool table. And we found the house and I said, you can have your closet. You can have the beautiful living room you wanted, the high ceilings, et cetera, et cetera. But we found the room for your husband's pool table. And he was so happy when he came to look at the house. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's communication. It's funny, Kelly, because I have a very similar approach to my contracting work. Like if I'm going to build a deck or a patio cover for some uh, for a customer, I always ask, well, what do you kind of want out of this experience? Who's going to be using the space? Who's and and what you know, what do you want to uh, feel when you come out here? Because that is important. You want to make sure that uh, that you're aware of their motivation so you can kind of hit all the points yes, that are important exactly to them, so. exactly so um well uh, i guess we i guess we have to tell the story right yeah look at you yep. so uh rick <laughs> you know here here's another another great reason to get in touch with uh, uh weikert realtor so uh I, I have to be careful i don't necessarily want people coming to my house or knowing my address but if you if you remember prince mongo back in this was 2000 about 2000 to 2003 he had a very infamous home in east memphis and it looked like a Jackson Pollard painting, Alan. You remember that? He thought it'd be fun one day to 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 bring you know to bring his friends over, fill water balloons with paint, and throw them at his house and his yeah. fence. Yeah. And he also thought it was cool to put toilets up on his roof for mm. decoration. Well, and a picnic table, and a picnic table, and mannequin heads in his front yard. In fact, his house was basically you could call it a performing. It was a whatever you call it. It was not a performing arts center, but it was just like. A, it was the Yoko Ono of houses. So every day when I had, because my kids were young, we would drive by Prince Mongo's house to see what he had done next. And um, one day I saw a for sale sign in front of Prince Mongo's house. And I'm like, oh, this is another one of his gags or something. And I'm like, uh, it, it's, it's a shame that Prince Mongo's moving. I, I'll miss the thing. And then about five minutes later, I said, you know, if you look beyond what he's done to the outside, it's a pretty big house. And we were at a point where we needed a bigger home, Alan, or, uh, uh, Rick, so I came to you and I said, "Can you help me buy Prince Mongo's house?" And you didn't throw me out of your office. You, didn't, <laughs> you said, "This is what we got to do, right?" I so, never yeah. say no. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it, you kind of sunk your teeth into it, right? Oh yeah, oh, it was great. But you know, look at the personalities. So, so anyway, yeah. Uh, basically, I said, "All right, let's let's see what we want to do." We wrote a contract up. Yeah. You know, um, I went through Mongo's house and looked at it. It's an interesting place. You know, yeah. I mean, no I mean, who has like 12 captain's hats? You know? <laughs> no. 400 so, shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and and skulls and stuff like that. Right. Anyway, so so we went through and um, we wrote the contract. And I said, you know, this might be a problem getting it through underwriting with the mortgage company. But what we're going to do is we're going to get everything ready to go. Joe said, oh, I'm going to paint the house after we close. I said, all right, we're going to get everything ready to go. And as soon as we're ready, you're going to go paint the house. And then we're going to have the appraiser go back and take a picture of the front of the house. Yeah, because, Alan, they have to take a picture of the house and send it to them. Oh, so yeah. that oh, involved yeah. a lot of work. I, I think I, when that we have more time, crazy. we're going to unpack this. This will be the ongoing saga. It'll mm. be just like the uh, ongoing saga of little Timmy. But uh, yeah. you guys, we're excited to have uh, Weikert Realtors as part of the uh, Tool Talk radio team. So before we run out of time, how do we get in touch with uh, with everybody over oh, there? Oh, 901. 202 2000. I got the telephone number in 1999 for my new company because nobody was talking about anything but the year 2000. There Absolutely. So, and Kelly, how do they get in touch with you? Well, it's always Weikert Realtors Benchmark. There are other Weikerts in Memphis, but we are the only Weikert Realtors Benchmark. And 202-2000. Yeah. Can reach us all. Drop in, play some foosball, go to their kitchen, mm-hmm. warm up your lunch. We're going to make the, the experience so much fun. It so is They got fun. me at kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Alan was uh, <laughs> Alan's heading over there after the show. So, But, um, no, it's great having you guys on. So we, we've got the – gosh, we're, we're, we're 
ticking away, Alan. We've got we've got real estate experts. We've got our HVAC people. We got the whole crew uh, assembling. Mm-hmm. So. A lot of fun here, uh, fun days here at Tool Talk Radio. But it's t- unfortunately the clock waits for no man, Alan. We're out of time. So uh, thanks you guys for coming in. Thank uh, you. <laughs> you've been listening to another action-packed episode of Tool Talk Radio on News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We will see you next week.